Hello everyone, thanks for joining us here on another episode of Inside the Nest. I'm Tenny Bello, alongside Jonathan Edmond, and we have quite a show for you guys. Oh yes we do, we have a little bit of everything in this show. As you can see, take a look at these handsome fellows back here. We sent our Red Hawk Sports Network crew all over from on the road with TCNJ Women's Lacrosse to softball against NJAC opponent Ramapo, and finally baseball trying to take down nationally ranked Rowan this weekend. But before we get into those games, let's talk about D3 week. From April 4th to 10th, all individuals associated with Division III athletics observe and celebrate the impact of athletics and of student athletes on the campus and surrounding community. During the week, every Division III school and conference is encouraged to conduct the type of outreach activity. For our school's efforts, the athletics department gave control of their Instagram account to the athletes for a series of takeovers. Let's see what the Red Hawks had to share with the world. Hi everyone, I'm Nikki Carter. I'm a junior here at Montclair State on the women's basketball team. More and everybody, as part of D3 week, the MSU men's soccer team is going to be ending up taking over the page today. Hi everyone, I'm Katie. I'm a freshman DS Libero on the volleyball team. And I'm Leah, I'm a freshman center. Come here. I'm doing my takeover. Get in here. Tell us how you're feeling about strength and conditioning today. Oh, I'm hype! Let's go! <laughs> Let me see it. Alright, actually not too shabby, not too shabby pump in today. Uh, stay tuned. It's going to get it, get it rocking in, in Penn. And how are we feeling over there? Good. Thumbs up. Get Pat. Thumbs up, good stuff, good stuff. We're proud to be D3 here at Montclair State and I think that's definitely reflected in our athletes. Today we traveled all the way to Trenton to watch the Montclair State Red Hawks face against the TCNJ Lions in what was a rematch of last year's NJAC championship game, a game in which TCNJ beat Montclair State 16 to six. Today was a windy, rainy, chilly day but the game was played nonetheless and in this game both teams had a lot to prove but TCNJ ended up becoming the victor by beating Montclair State 18 to 3. Defensively they were locked in offensively they never stopped running and the coaches did an excellent job at putting them in the best positions possible to score. Seven players from the Lions scored a goal four of them scored two goals or more and Jennifer LaRocco scored a team high five goals with two assists. On the Red Hawks side, Tristan Conan scored two of the three goals. Now let's go to softball where Evan Diaz is covering the game versus Ramapo. Thanks, Joel. Well, Montclair State were originally supposed to head on the road to take on Ramapo this weekend, but the games moved to here at MSU Softball Stadium. The Red Hawks will take advantage of this new home set as it's been a slow start in conference play. They're currently 1-3 in the end, Jack, including a sweep at the hands of King University on Tuesday. The Red Hawks will need some bounce back starts from Ali Cavallero and Kayla Volante, as well as continued hitting success from Jenna Meluso and Alyssa Barozin. With Ramapo currently on a three game win streak, Montpo State will need to be at their very best to walk away from today with two wins. The Red Hawks came to the game with high spirits, but things would quickly turn sour. Ali Cavallero would run into trouble in the very first inning, highlighted by this grand slam by Marissa Di Paolo. Cavallero did not make it past the first inning, second time this year that's happened. Down 8-0, the Red Hawks had some fight, as Stephanie Cerritos would hit a RBI double to make it 8-2. That would be as close as MSU got. Final score, 8-2 Ramapo. MSU had a chance for revenge and came out threatening. The Red Hawks would load the bases in three separate innings, including the very first, but each time Ramapo would deny Montclair. The Roadrunners made Montclair State pay as they converted on their own opportunities. A four-run fifth inning highlighted by another big hit by DiPaolo to make it 6-0 would seal the deal. Montclair State shut out 7-zip, dropping both games on the day. So a slump is a good word. I do think we are in a slump, but we are definitely not finished. I do think we have a comeback coming, and it's one game at a time. I think 
we say together every time that we break out of a huddle. I do think we need to stick together and just get back, just get back up there. With the two losses, Montclair State falls to 17 and 10 on the year with a 1 and 5 record in the end jack. The Red Hawks will have to rebound in a doubleheader on Tuesday against Rutgers Camden with the first game starting at 3 o'clock. That's it for softball. Now let's take it over to baseball over at Yogi Bear Stadium where Montclair State takes on end jack rivals Rowan. Thanks, Evan. The number seven ranked team in the country in the Rowan Profs came to town as Montclair State hosted a doubleheader on Saturday. They did drop the first game eight to nothing, but the real story of the day was game two with Brian Reese on the hill and the Red Hawks looking to split. We knew it was going to be tough coming into it, but our whole team is confident we can compete with anyone. First game for sure, it felt like we were hitting well. We just weren't getting rewarded for it. Our pitching did good. And then we just had to carry momentum into the second game after dropping the first one. You know, Ethan Gonzalez do a great game for us. You know, the score didn't show, but I think that gave us some confidence going into game two, and we gave the ball to a senior, Brian Reese, and he did an excellent job and gave us a chance to win, and that's all you can ask for. You know, the offense has been, you know, the engine that's going for us. So, you know, that, that's, that, that's them, getting four in the first, going down three. Again, no, no panic. Um, you know, putting up a big inning there, putting them on their heels, putting them a little defensive, and, um, you know, we're able to overcome it. One through nine, I always say it. I think we're the best offense in the NJAC. It's just another NJAC game. We didn't come in expecting anything different. We prepare the same way we prepare every single time. And just as a team, we got it done today. It was a huge win for the Red Hawks, a statement victory in the conference, taking down a team like Rowan, even if it's just one in the doubleheader, and a true test that they passed heading forward into the season. John and Tenney, back to you. Graduate student David Metzger has been on the role as a goalkeeper for MSU Lacrosse with his personal accolades with the team. Besides having a 61.8 save percentage and an outstanding goals allowed stat of 8.18, allowing less shots within a game, he makes sure to give all credit to the coaching staff and defense from his team. As the goalkeeper for the Montclair State men's lacrosse team, graduate student David Metzger has been having an outstanding season so far. Before coming to MSU, Metzger played at Kenyon College in Gambier, Ohio for his undergraduate career. At Kenyon, Metzger was named to the All-North Coast Athletic Conference team at the end of both his junior and senior seasons. In addition, he won the US ILA's All-American Award at the end of his senior year which makes him only the fifth player in Kenyan history to earn this award since 2001. Metzger now looks to make a significant impact on his new team, the Montclair State Redhawks. Choosing my graduate school and deciding on Montclair State, it was a little bit of an unexpected journey, obviously. When I first started out, I wasn't expecting to play graduate school lacrosse at all because COVID hadn't existed yet. And then once the COVID pandemic hit, I had a shortened 2020 season. 2021, I only played, I believe, seven games. And I realized that I wanted to continue my, my lacrosse career. I, I love the sport so much. During his time at Kenyon College, Metzger had an exceptional average save percentage of 61.4% to 1,700 minutes on field. In 2021, he ranked third place in all of Division III lacrosse for his save percentage out of players who logged 400 minutes or more on the season. So far with Montclair State, he is living up to those high standards and has a save percentage of 58.4% to 605 minutes on field. I think I owe my save percentage really to everybody else, not myself. The coaching staff devises a great plan every single time that we go out. They give me the shots that I want to see. We go over matchups, we go over where we want shots to come from, we go over slide packages, and then my defense as well. They communicate with me, they give me the shots that I want to see in terms of where they're guiding their players, they play physical. For MSU, he sits at an average of 9.02 goals allowed per game. Allowing less shots into the net every game pairs extremely well with the high-powered offense that the Red Hawks have. My mindset going forward is one thing, and that's winning a conference championship. I don't really worry about personal accolades simply because uh, at the end of the day, if I could choose between a personal accolade and a team accolade, I'd take the team every single time. But I think the bond here is really special. Everybody thinks that we can win not just a CSAC championship, but a national championship and go deep into the national tournament. I think oftentimes teams limit themselves and the precedent we're setting for where we're going to go in May is, is really special. And that's something that I haven't experienced and that's, that's been fantastic. We look forward to Metzger continuing to be a driving force of this team. If he continues to play well, Montclair State will be in a very good spot for the rest of the season.
With Metzger and Gold, the team took on Keystone College this weekend and got a 26 to nothing victory, placing them at seven and four on the season, one and one in the CSAC. And the numbers were impressive. 16 players recorded at least a point. The Red Hawks haven't shut out a team in over nine years when they defeated Mount St. Mary 20-0 back in 2013. 12 goals came from the first quarter alone, and MSU won 25 out of the 29 total faceoffs in the contest. They have four games left this season, all against conference opponents. Athletes, you'll normally find them on the field, court, or in the weight room. However, if they're not there, you'll probably find them in their dorm rooms. Let's tag along as an MSU athlete shows us his home away from home. What's up guys, I'm Cameron Martin. Welcome to Red Hawk Cribs. This is Inside the Nest. Come on in. This right here is the living room. You know, we've got, got a living room and the kitchen over there. Got clean supplies in that closet over here. Now I'm gonna take a little more upstairs with it. This is my room right here. Save it, save it up, no. Uh, but yeah, this is, uh, this is the bedroom right here. Uh, this is where my bed is. I got jerseys hanging up and stuff. Now I got Larry Fitzgerald right here. Kobe Bryant, and a Kobe Bryant poster. I got a NJAC, NJAC championship shirt right here. Tim Brown jersey. Over here, you now I got my WMSC shirt where I am the assistant sports director, which next semester I'll be taking over for the GOAT Jack Bartek. And this is probably my favorite piece of everything in here. This blanket to honor my mother. You now this is... I got this as a birthday gift that she passed away. And it's one of those things that it just, it just means so much to me. And I'm glad I have that to honor her as well as I got a few pictures of her. I'm just here to honor, honor the fallen and just look out for everybody. I love, I love uh, to honor and support those who came before me and look out for those at the end of the day. Here's what to watch for this week. On April 13th, the men's lacrosse team is looking to build off an impressive week as they take on Karen University at six. On April 14th, baseball welcomes another NJAC opponent to Yogi as NJCU comes to town at 3.30. Both teams will meet again the next day, but this time at NJCU. On April 16th, women's lacrosse looks to bounce back after the loss against TCNJ as they host Rutgers Camden in another NJAC matchup at 1. Softball heads down to Glassboro for a doubleheader against Rowan University. Finally, TCNJ comes to Yogi to swing the bats at 1 and 4 o'clock. And don't forget to follow us on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok for your latest RHSN news. It's looking like a full week of action for our Red Hawks, and you can find it all here on the Red Hawks Sports Network. You can definitely do that, but you can also come out to the games as well because the weather's popping outside. Yeah, it's touching 80 degrees outside. That's my type of weather, but even better weather for some Red Hawk action. That's all we have for today. That's Jonathan Edmond. I'm Tenny Bello. See you all next week.